Now, <coughs> I went to see my brother yesterday, or the day before, and he found this. It's an ammunition box, and um, what it contained is a bunch of grayscales that I shot for our software. So I had completely forgotten about these. It took a lot of work to make these. And what it is, is my color transparency standard. Now I've talked about standards before. Um, and this is a color standard, okay? And so what I did was I created a 22 step grayscale, reflection grayscale that would photograph well. And I put it underneath a Macbeth color checker. So you had colors above and a grayscale below. And I don't know if you can see this, but this is an ectochrome grayscale. I want to zoom in, turn this light. It's kind of dark here because I want to turn it, um, keep it dark here so you can see this. And I'm going to show you what a perfect color transparency looks like. I'm going to zoom in here. I created this box in Photoshop. So, okay, so <clears throat> this is a photographic software, Ektachrome Grayscale. 22 steps from D-Max to Off-White. This is the six-step grayscale on a Macbeth color checker. And you've got all these colors above. This is shot on Ektachrome. <clears throat> and it was made to balance, to make a good internet, good negs, a good internegatives on internegative film. So if you shot it in Ektachrome, and you wanted to make a negative to make a color print from that ectochrome slide or transparency, you would balance the darkroom with this grayscale. You would expose this by contact onto internegative film. This, these steps are measured into our software and it takes the densitometer readings, uh, uh, manipulates those readings to reflect what a print would look like. And if it didn't match up, that meant your negative is not balanced. So I came up with the math to modify densitometer readings to reflect what it would look like on a good C print on Kodak C print paper. That's what this was made for. And <laughs> this is, I had to make a light box here. So. That's an ectochrome, okay? This is a Kodachrome. A Kodachrome is a totally different animal. Even though this looks gray, light shining through the Kodachrome is not equal. So in other words, this, this step here This step here measures about 90, 90, 90 on a reflection densitometer, or very close to it. And when this looks gray, it measures 127, 90, 74 or something. I don't remember now, but it's, it does it according to the light that passes through a Kodachrome, it's not gray, but it looks gray. So our job as a printer is to make it gray so that the color print looks like the Kodachrome transparency. This was a real issue for us in the print business for many years and Kodak's official reply was, well, Kodachrome is not meant to be reproduced. It's meant to be looked at as a slide that you could project. Reproducing it, they never came up with a balance other than a balance for Ektachrome. So you would have to use that balance to make negatives and cortical. Well, we're the first ones to come out and say, no, you need a different balance and you, maybe a different inner nake film, whatever. And when the curves came together in our software, then you go ahead and do production. And I had people telling me, this is the best naked I've ever made from a cortical. Well, it's because, you know, we addressed that. 
Okay, now, let's see, that's Kodochrome. Yeah. This is Agfachrome. You can kind of see Agfachrome. So, for the European market, people who were shooting a lot of Agfachrome, they could make their internet based on this. And this is Fujichrome. I made it green, right? Now, if you want a true highlight, you pretty much have to punch a hole here to get pure white, okay? Or you could bleach it. You could cover it with frisk, a frisket and, and um, bleach just a square here to make a true highlight. You can't measure highlights because they're on the rims of glasses, you know, on, on the rim of metal things. So true highlights cannot be measured. So if you want to measure a true highlight, I instructed my users to cut a hole or to bleach the base away. Then you would have a true white to black grayscale. But this, if you, I don't know if you can see this, but it just barely separates here. Okay, and the D Max, well, at least on the Exochrome, goes up to about 3.2, and D Max on Kodachrome would be on 4.0 on a densitometer. So I have four kinds of grayscales that can be used as a um, standard. They don't make internates anymore, although I still have some in the freezer, <laughs> which I don't know what to do with, but. If you guys want this, you can uh, send me a self-addressed stamped envelope and I'll send it to you. I don't have a whole lot. I think I have like 25 ectochromes, 20 kodachromes. I have a lot of agvachrome because I didn't sell, a lot, not, not a lot of people have to ask for agvachrome and I have fujichrome. But I, I, I don't know what to do with this stuff. This took me <laughs> so much time and energy to make these because it was for our software. We would configure our software to match whatever grayscale you got because everyone's a little bit different, but they're all good and they'll make very fine um, balances for you. I mean, this is the agricultural. Just look at how neutral it is, how neutral it is up and down. This is, again, the, this is the ectochrome. I mean, people are telling me, how did you do this? Well, you gotta use brand new chemistry, you gotta season it, and once, you, you gotta test it, test it, once you get the balance, you gotta make a whole box. <laughs> so, a whole 50 sheet box. And you have to process it, um, tight control, and then you have it. And then, and even then, I would say at least 20% of them didn't pass muster. So if the gray was off by more than five points, then I just, I didn't sell it. I didn't use that one. So I have some seconds here, <laughs> which you guys are welcome to, I guess. And uh, the Kodachrome is tricky because of course, they don't make four by five Kodachrome. So this is three exposures of, of 35 millimeter shot in succession with the same exposure in order to get all those steps. And this is a separate exposure, separate exposure. And then I stripped it into a, a sheet of lift film. So this is a lot of work, okay? But we sold it, we sold our software for over $4,000. So it was worth it for me to do this, but this is left over. And I didn't want to waste it. So I'm offering to you guys, uh, no charge. You just send me a self-addressed stamp down now. You're overseas, that's an issue. I don't know. Overseas, I don't know what to do. Um, maybe overseas, I can, because I have to wait in line with a mask on, and I, I don't like shipping overseas. Um, because I know a lot of you guys are overseas, Germany or England and Romania. You know, I, and I don't want these to go to waste, right? They're so beautiful. I did, you know, this is thirty years old, ninety. I think I have it, the date on is 92 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. 
March 91. That's Pat's uh, record. So that was a Fuji Chrome. So you're talking 90, 30 years ago. But because they're kept, they're kept in a light tight box, in an ammunition box, which is sealed by it for with air, they look brand new. Um, now you can use it to make black and white nakes. You can make it, use it to make zebra chromes if you're into that. Duplicate transparencies, reversal prints, um, dye transfers. It's perfect for dye transfer if anyone out there is still doing dye transfers. Um, but just as a reference, if you're shooting, if you're shooting ch chrome film and it looks this neutral from black to white, you're on the right track. Um, of course, we had to filter each one of these to get it to be perfectly gray. Uh, filtering the lights or the, behind the lens with, with CC filters. Um, what else can you do with this? <laughs> what else can you, you can still make internets. You can. I mean, you can just get regular color film, contact it onto regular color film. Uh, and you have to read it on the desitometer. And I have to tell you what that algorithm is if I can remember um, then you could still make good internets. you can make duplicate transparencies if you have a really nice transparency you want to make 10 of them you can contact it onto a uh, another extrachrome and make it match this okay and then once you get that done then you can do your real transparencies balance your enlarger with the lab that or your, if you're gonna process it yourself and that's what we did. It's a lost art. And I don't want it to go to waste. So, okay. Oh, let's see. I should do this. Uh, let me go in here. I had to create this <laughs> in order to... Because I, I don't have a light box in this location. That's why. Um, uh, let me do this. Uh, okay. So... Big enough. What? <laughs> oh, because I made it so, so yeah. Uh, that's so good. Hang in there. <laughs> Right. <clears throat> Can you guys see this? So, my darkroom is in San Francisco, but I'm currently living in Pacifica. This is my address. 337 Monterey Road, Pacifica, California, 94044, USA. You send me, and it can't be a regular envelope. It has to be big enough to hold, you know, this is four by five, okay? So it has to be a big enough stamped envelope. And just to let you know, I mean, we were selling these for like $300 each back in the day. Um, but first come, first serve. Um, and if I run out, I'll have to just, you won't get all four. You'll just get whatever I have, I guess. And... I don't know how long I'll do it. I'm not going to do it indefinitely. Cause 
I can't. But it's easy if I get a stamped envelope. And I just stick it and put it in the mailbox, right? If you're overseas, maybe you can figure that out. If you can get U.S. stamps from your post office and stick it on, then it's easy for me to send it to Germany or wherever, right? Because I know there's like maybe a hundred of you that I want this, and I don't, I don't think I have a hundred, but I'll, I'll send out whatever I have because, like I said, um, these are very, very valuable. I mean, making these as a color nay is very valuable. So I used to have this as colored. I had different, you know, VPS negatives that were shot the same way. They were my, my, all my darkrooms were balanced with this. I had um, internegs made that, in every darkroom. So I had balances for all these different papers with the standard. And it, this is the standard. This is what it looked like in the transparency. I shot this in, in color negative too. And when you print it, this is 30, 30, 30, 40, 40, 40. I mean, it's really close. And this is like 300, 304, 299. It's really, these are really good. Now, I haven't measured these in a long time, but it met my standard. And that's why they were in this box for 30 years. I have to tell you, it was a lot of fun doing this. Now, let's see, this is Kodachrome. All right, uh, yeah. Pat ready this, okay. Here's, here's a Kodachrome. The blacks, 367, 336, 300, near the blacks. The gray, 165, 138, 131. That was a Kodachrome. Okay, that's this Kodachrome. This one's an ectochrome. 281, 290, 271. Um, gray, 182, 182, 183. Uh, 92, 90, 89. Of course, this was measured 30 years ago. Status A on, a on uh, Macbeth. This is an early one because it doesn't have photographic software. So I can tell this one was the early one before I started putting those labels on. Um, only, that, those only two I have readings. Oh, here's one. And Okay, so this one, the gray is 113, 114, 113. 87, 86, 83. The white was 32, 34, 35. You know, the <laughs> customers didn't give me stuff this good. But of course, they didn't have a lab. They just were photographers, right? But we being a lab, we were able to hold the control and, and, and do this. So, again, that's my address. Uh, or you can email me, tell me, and then I'll set aside a set and send it to you. These are great. Not an easy thing to do, I can assure you. This grayscale, okay, was made by piecing together black and white prints. I made a whole slew of black and white prints, just grays. And I didn't make it linear, so what I did was I made it so that instead of a straight line, I made it like I made it like this. So there's a bump here. So it exaggerates the midtone. When I shot it, then it came down like this. And so it was, it was fairly linear after I shot it. That's why they look so good. They, they asked me, how did you do this? I didn't tell them. <laughs> Kodak was really wondering, how did you do, how did, you? everyone was asking me, how did you do this? Well, that's how I did it. Now you guys know. Okay? So, I wanted to do this and um, offer it to you guys. Uh, you got the number. If you're interested, I would snatch it up. 
if nothing else, because you can't even buy Kodachrome anymore. These are exquisite. These shots. All right, that's the video. Um, nothing else to say. <laughs>